Hi there, my name is Eric and I play bass and welcome to this gear vlog. Gear vlog is the series where I talk and demonstrate different pieces of gear that maybe not uh, require a full length in-depth demo uh, like some other pieces might require and um, well it's also a bit more relaxed on my behalf so to speak. Today we are checking out two bases. First up we got the Harley Benton U-Base. I ordered this from Thorman uh, and uh, I pretty much uh, ordered it right away when I saw uh, it being featured in I think it was Ultimate Guitar or something. Uh, it's a solid body ukulele sized bass. It has a piezo pickup, it's got volume, treble and bass controls and the silicone strings and it's pretty darn cool I must say. It retails for about 120 euros uh, which is not a lot for a piece of gear or you know an actual instrument that you can actually play. Um, I'm gonna give you some clips now of what it sounds like. Here's what it sounds like straight into Logic with no post-processing and with both um, EQ controls rolled all the way off. Here's with the bass knob all the way up. Here's with the treble knob rolled all the way up and bass rolled all the way off. And here's with both rolled fully up. I'm gonna try to find the middle spot here, somewhere around there I think. Treble rolled all the way off and bass in the middle. And the same with the treble. Bass roll all the way up and treble in the middle. So there you have it, that's what the Harley Benton U-Bass sounds like. Straight into Logic, no post-processing whatsoever except for you know the compression that YouTube usually applies to the videos, whether you like it or not. So thoughts and opinions on this bass. So first up, the silicone strings on this bass. Those strings take some time to get used to. I noticed that when I uh, demoed the U sub from Peter Naglic. You know, you have to get your fingers used to the feel of these uh, weird strings, and you know, slides are pretty much are a bit harder to do because your fingers, you know, stick to the strings in a way. Perhaps I should add some, you know, talc or something. You know, the thing that you use when you lift weights. However, there are a few caveats with this instrument. Of course, the neck feels pretty darn decent. However, it's not completely even. I can feel some, you know, twigs sticking around here uh, and my fingers, you know, uh, I don't know if this is a dent or if it's not sanded properly. I don't really know. Uh, however, there is something there that you can, you know, feel if you grab it with your fingernail. So there is that. Uh, the fret dents, however, are really nicely done. No, you know, sharp fret ends here to be found. Um, the preamp is, you know, it's decent. It sounds sounds good. It sounds like a ukulele bass, solid body ukulele bass. The burst on this bass is actually pretty darn good looking, I must say. It's not very cheap looking, if I may say so. Um, tuners feel solid. Myself, I kind of like preamps that are, you know, where you have a center and you can uh, have cut or boost. I think this preamp is just a boost preamp. I kind of would have preferred a, you know, cut and boost preamp on this bass, but that's just me. Um, there is a bit of noise going on, especially here on the third fret, if you have, you know, the bass rolled off. The 
the C here has a bit of you know noise going on on the neck. I don't know how much of that is coming through in Logic. I really don't know. And if you crank the bass, you know, you can't really tell that it's there. However, when you're playing <laughs> unplugged, you can definitely hear the rattle going on there. But like I said, I paid 120 euros for this. You don't get a case with it. I don't know if I would have wanted a case, but maybe a small gig bag would have been nice to, you know, have to, you know, put it in to lug around. That being said, it does probably fit in a suitcase. So if you're going abroad or something, you can probably tuck it down there. So yeah, it's not that heavy. However, it doesn't feel like a toy. It feels like an actual instrument. So yeah, Holly Benton U bass. You know, it's a ukulele bass for your unplugged gig or whatnot. It's, it's fun. So yeah, there is that. Next up. Next up, we've got Blackie here. <laughs> this is a parts base essentially that uh, my good friend Peter helped me put together. Uh, we finished this base uh, yesterday, uh, which was Sunday. Today's Monday. Um, I got uh, this body and uh, those pickups and the bridge and whatnot in a trade. I traded away my fretless because I realized that I play fretless about once a year and for the first two seconds I think that I sound like Jaco or um, Michael Manrig and then uh, I hear myself play and I think I, I, that I suck and I put it away. So uh, I decided to part ways with my fretless and I got offered uh, well pieces of this bass in a trade. So I figured hey why not. Um, this bass was already routed for these three pickups. However, we changed out the pickup that was in there, which was, I think, a Fender Mexico P pickup or something for the DiMarcio Relentless. Uh, this is an Arctic uh, Humbucker EBO uh, pickup. And this, I think, is a Squire J pickup. The neck is uh, pretty much completely new. It's from 2018. It's a Fender um, 1951 style precision bass neck. It's a nice big solid baseball bat. It's really nice and chunky and feels great. We, Peter I should say, sanded it down so that it doesn't have that sticky icky finish. And um, yeah, it turned out great this bass. I must say Peter really worked his magic when it came to, you know, attaching the neck to the body. I'll have a quick clip here of how we did that. And as you can see here, IKEA has started to make bases. <laughs> this is how you assemble the neck. <laughs> um, we had to plug the holes for uh, that were on the neck and replace them with new ones. So. And there is actually some birch in this neck, so it's not just a complete maple neck. It's actually a maple birch neck, if you don't mind. Um, so, what does it sound like? As you probably can notice, it has two outputs. It didn't have that when it uh, came to me. It had just a regular output down here. Uh, but now it has two outputs. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through the controls. So here we have a stacked knob, we have volume and tone for this pickup. We have a three-way selector to go between uh, these two pickups and we have pretty much a master volume and this one. So right now when there is no nothing being plugged into this output jack, all three pickups are going through this output. Uh, I can control the volume on this one with this knob. So here's what the P pickup sounds like straight into Logic. <laughs> Both pickups. Just the J. And now, uh, let's see, let's do these two. All three. And 
and these two. However, if you want to use just this pickup, you will have to use that output jack. Um, if I were to use this bass in a stereo setup and you know plug a cable into that output jack, this one doesn't, uh, as you can hear now. Now it's just the P pickup. This volume doesn't do anything. However, So using the second output um, removes this pickup from that output and routes it to that output instead. So you get independent control of that pickup only. And uh, here's what that pickup sounds like uh, on its own. And with tone rolled all the way off. So yeah, and as you can see, the master volume doesn't do anything to that output. Um, yeah, uh, hip shot detuner I should add as well. It turned out really cool, this bass, I must say. Um, here's what it sounds like through my uh, quad cortex preset that I've got going. So yeah, that's what this bass sounds like. It turned out really cool, I must say. Um, the neck, like I said, is from 2018. So it's been sitting in a warehouse for, uh, warehouse, warehouse. Yeah, warehouse for about, you know, four years. So it was about time that this poor neck got to get played. Um, yeah, I really like the look of it as well. It's just, you know, black. How much more black could this be? And the answer is, None, none is that good? more black. Is that so yeah, there's no scalloping going on here on the upper frets yet. I don't know if I will add that at some point. That would be pretty cool to have. Um, this bass essentially is uh, uh, meant to be a backup for my Limited 3, as that one also has the Relentless pickup. Uh, however, I think this bass shines pretty well on its own. So we'll see 
how much I'll play this live and you know all of that. It's not an expensive bass. I don't know what the parts add up to, but I think it's you know around 900 euros or so, maybe a bit more. However, it's not a very expensive bass and it feels really solid. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, Peter took his time to get this bass together for me. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That was uh, a gear vlog for all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this little video and uh, you know, the, the samples of uh, these two bases. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the tones that you just heard. And uh, well, my name is Eric and I play bass and I'll see you guys and gals and cats and dogs in the next video. Until next time, take care. Bye.